as an adult, compound interest is going to be a part of your life. Whether you have a savings account, whether you use credit cards, take out a mortgage loan, anything like that. Um, or savings for retirement and knowing what your payout is and things like that. So compound interest is interest earned on your interest. Prior to this, we've mostly been dealing with simple interest or a linear rate of increase. Well, when we have compound interest, say after a year, I make so much money and it goes into my account. The next year, my new value of interest of either my savings of what I earn or the amount that I have to pay out is based on that new balance and it's then calculated. You can't really solve an exponential function or compound interest without uh, the, the calculator. It's easier to do with linear functions. These are not linear functions. If I graph the values, they would create a curve. So the format for calculating compound interest is the amount that you have or your balance is calculated by taking the principal, so your initial investment, and then one, representing 100% of that principal, plus the rate over the number of times that rate is calculated or the compound interest is calculated in a year. Then that number of times is calculated in a year times the number of years the interest is being calculated. All right, sounds kind of crazy. Let's plug in this example here. So if somebody invests $6,500 at three and a half interest, uh, three and a half interest, uh, and it's compounded quarterly for eight years, what is their balance going to be? So I need to start plugging in my known values. So it, you might see something like your savings after the amount of time. Uh, the X is generally used in terms of T because the X, the input, is based off of time and how much time has passed. So the savings we have if, with time is we start off with $6,500 as our principal investment. Then we took the 100% of that plus my rate, well my rate is 3.5%. I then convert that to a decimal value first, which just means I move the decimal over, so if I'm at 3.5, I need to move it left two places. So it's 0 0.035, so 0 0.035 over, how many times is calculated in a year? Well, if it's quarterly, quarter four, there are four of them in a year, and then I take how many times it's calculated in a year and multiply it by the number of years. Okay, so it looks like a lot, but just like any order of operations process, we just take it a chunk at a time. I have a parentheses, so I need to solve inside of it first. I have addition and division. Guess what? I have to divide first. Let me get, I should have gotten my calculator out ahead of time. Okay, so I'm going to go 0 0.035 divided by 4 equals, so I get 0 0.00875. Okay, so now I have 1 plus 0 0.00875, and this plus the 1 just simplifies to So I now have this, and bring this, oh, and I can replace T with 8, because I know it's 8 years, equals 6,500 times that, raised to the, now I need to, well, if I have 4 times 8, that means I have 32 as an exponent. So I have a multiplication, and I have an exponent. I have to evaluate the exponent first. So I go back to my calculator, I add 1 to it to get that, and then I need to raise this, so I use the X to the Y power button, I need to raise this to the 32nd root. That's saying in eight years, the interest will be compounded 32 times, and then I can hit enter. That means my initial investment of 6,000 then gets multiplied by one point three, two, one, 15, one, uh, five, one, nine, one, nine, three, five, 
3525. And when it comes to this, do not round up. You need all of those decimal points. You, you want to leave all of that on your calculator um, to then be able to multiply by that initial value because if you take something off, it's going to adjust the number of even the pennies that you have. So then when you go in to type what the answer is, it's not going to recognize it as accurate. It might be close, but not accurate. So keep all of that. And the other thing I can know is I know that this times this, this is showing my, this is my growth factor, how much this is increasing by over the course of that time. Well, the one represents the initial value. So anything after that is my growth. So I actually, over eight years, am going to make a 32% profit, which sounds pretty good for just putting some money away for eight years and it's now a third greater than it was beforehand. So let's see what our actual final value is. So we take our 1.321 and so on, and then we're going to multiply that by our principal. So that is saying right there, we'll go ahead and hit the equal sign. So at the end of eight years, my new balance is going to be $8,589. Now I need to round up when it comes to cents. So if it's 875, that's gonna go up to 88 cents. So with an input of eight, I get almost $8,600 as my output. Uh, and so this same rule applies. The only thing that's going to change is your rate, um, but as far as if, if this happens to be uh, compounded monthly, guess what? In, in place of your N, you're going to have a 12. So it just is going to vary based on how often uh, you're being asked to calculate it, but the formula and the format is the same. Simplify what's inside of here, divide your rate by how many times it's calculated in a year, Multiply the number of times it's calculated in the year by how many years that happens. Plug in whatever your initial value is, uh, making sure you have your percentage converted into a decimal. If I did this as 3.5 divided by 4, I would have had a much different answer. 3.5 as a rate means it's 350% growth in a year. Ooh, I want an investment in that. So. Handle your decimals correctly and then just follow the order of operations and you'll be fine.